All right, good evening. I'd like to call the Athletics and Wellness Subcommittee to order. Um, it's about 6.42. Um, in attendance tonight are myself, Mr. Miko, Mr. Hockman, and uh, Mr. Olympio and Mrs. Dunn are also in the building with us and uh, are welcome to jump in at any time. Um, we have a couple points on our agenda that we just wanted to touch briefly on tonight and um, start a ongoing conversation about um, as we get um, you know, into the summer and as the school year you know, could begin um, in the fall. Those would be uniforms, sports facilities, and then college preparation for athletes. So I think um, we can start, I would actually like to start with the college preparation for, for athletes first before we get into um, some of the other um, points. So I can tell you, I've had a few parents reach out to me and I know um, we've been having conversations here um, overall in part about the role of the athletics department, the athletics director, but also uh, more broadly what it would look like to assist our students and primarily students in um, athletics with going on to college, what that would look like when it comes to either recruiting or not even if they're at their tier where they're recruited, that they may benefit from playing a sport or may be able to get into a potentially better school than they may be accepted to because of the sport that they play. Um, so those are a couple things that, you know, I think on our end we should start to look at because I know there are some parents who have said, um, you know, we're novices at this basically. You know, I've had some who have said, well, you know, I've been through this a few times with my older students so we got the hang of it, but it would be nice if there was um, some tools and resources for folks out there in the community um, that may benefit, you know, those students. And I think, you know, obviously we have to look at what is our obligation as a school district versus um, what people might want to do in addition to, you know, the, the basis we set. Um, but I do think that's something that's, that's worth talking about, it, excuse me, and what we can do to potentially assist them. So um, I see our superintendent joining us now, but um, certainly happy to start the ball rolling on that. I mean, for me, um, you know, I would like us to potentially look at the roles of our athletic department, potentially athletic director, and see if there are any opportunities in there, whether it's, you know, as a role or an extra um, additional after school um, possibility for our students and our athletes. Sure, Mr. Miko. Sure, through the chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Arnotis, well said there. Um, yeah, you, you know, I think we discussed this last week in our meeting where, you know, COVID really um, hampered, obviously, education. Um, it hampered extracurricular activities. And um, a as, a, uh, as a parent, it was so nice to go back to the playing fields and watch the kids play. Um, and before we start, I, I do want to um, congratulate the boys baseball team on an incredible season. Um, I believe they came up short last night in a tournament game. Um, and also the girls lacrosse team, um, two great teams that, um, you know, with a bunch of players, student athletes who will be going on to the, uh, to the next level. And that's something that we're talking about. So I wanted to congratulate them. And I, and I wasn't sure, are the, are the boys still playing? The boy, they, they lost as well. So I want to congratulate them. They did win their first round. So I just want to congratulate them on a, on a really great season and the coaches as well. But sure, um, Mr. Anotis, you make a good point. You know, the athletic director is, and I think that position has evolved and changed since you know, we were, even since you were in school, uh, you know, a lot early, you know, over well, the last few years, I, sh I should say. And um, I think there's just more involved there. Um, and just talking to athletic directors, you know, across the state who are friends of mine, uh, the demands on them, um, you know, there's a lot more liability. There's just a lot more involved. And I, and I, I wonder if, if there's something that we can look at. I know we're going to be hiring an athletic director. Um, Wondering if, if there's something where we can look at the job description and maybe, um, you know, make it so they are more focused on the athletic piece and, and recruiting the student, student athletes to come to, to the high school and then, you know, um, being with them that whole, the, the four years and then getting them to the next level. Um, um, so that's something we can probably discuss. Um, but, but yeah, it's a very difficult position. It's an important position. Um, and again, I just look at this year, we have a, a bunch of great kids who are great students, who are great athletes, and who are going to the next level. And as a parent, it must be so difficult to, be, to have to worry about all that um, in between. And I know some of the private schools and, 
and you know, and let's face it, someone who has the, um, the means to pay for it, there are private consultants out there that, that help these kids. Um, and shame if we can't do it on our end. I mean, we're a public education, but shame if we can't provide something similar. Um, and I know we do provide that, but something where it's just really geared towards those student athletes, you know, uh, to get them to that next level. I mean, we talk about career readiness. You know, for these kids, they're going to be leaders. I mean, it's, it's out there. You know, you know when, you, when you look at leaders, you know, they usually took a leadership role in high school, whether it was sports or whether it was the arts or, or, or drama. They were, they were leaders, and, um, and I think we owe it to them and we owe it to our community that we, um, we look into it. I'll yield. Well, thank you, and I agree. And I think if you look at our history with athletic directors, we've kind of been blessed with the fact that we have had directors who have been willing to go above and beyond, and that role has expanded almost as we have gone through them over time, you know? Um, so I certainly expect with us this is a worthwhile conversation for us to have. And, you know, there is there's the balance of staying within reason, of course, with as a public school what we can do. But again, this goes back to, I think, something we talk about in any aspect. We want to be competitive with the schools in the area, whether it's the prep, St. Mary's, all of those competitors of ours that are offering different opportunities for our athletes. We want to make sure that within reason we can offer as much to them as well. Uh, Mr. Hoffman? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Arnotis. I'm, I'm really excited that we're talking about this in your subcommittee. So I want to thank you and Mr. Amico for the, the leadership and, and the lead and guidance on this subject. Um, I, I, I absolutely believe that this is an important aspect of what we do as a committee uh, as a whole. We no longer um, are here to, to simply educate uh, students to get them a diploma. We're, we're, we're charged with college and career readiness um, on a variety of levels. And some of the kids that we, that, that come through PBD Public Schools um, are only here because they're able to play a certain sport. And that's kind of the carrot that they have in order to get them their diploma. But, you know, I was talking to Mr. Amico a little bit earlier. I'll analogize this to, can you imagine if Essex Tech ran the plumbing program without union, the, the, the local plumbers union and local union plumbers who, who were teaching, not only teaching those kids, but funneling them into the union upon graduation. So that's what we're talking about here. That's what I think, and, and I, it sounds like you, the, you two agree as well, and, and I know Dr. Vidala, we talked about this a few meetings ago, but if we have a, a high school athlete, and I'll just say a football player, you know, I had a lot of conversations with Coach Betancourt this year. Um, you know, football got played in that fall two um, or winter. I, I don't know. It was, it was n not their traditional season. It was a fall two season. And, uh, the, you know, it was in the middle of a grading period, and there were some issues with students who weren't able to, uh, didn't have connectivity and, and weren't able to uh, get online and, and make up work being done. And those kids were, all, you know, were willing wanted, were, 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 were eager to make up the work. They wanted to do the work so they can play football. And without a football season, without the MIAA coming forward and saying we're going to actually put a football season together, I don't know that those kids do that work. Well, I think it's incumbent upon us in our district to take those kids to the next level, whatever that is. I'm not suggesting that all of our students are going to become Olympic athletes, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, or you know, certainly going to go professional. But if, you know, I've always said to, to kids that I coach at a younger level, if we can trade your skills in for a partial ride, right, whether that be at a Division one, two, or three school, or even a junior college somewhere where, where they can um, further their education, further uh, their, you know, hone their skills to be able to become a productive member of society. And I agree with Mr. Amico. You know, maybe it's time... Um, and, and Mr. Arnota said it, you know, we've had this, we've had legendary athletic directors in Peabody, and, and they, um, you know, have redefined the position of athletic director in the North Shore, maybe Massachusetts, or maybe beyond for decades. And, you know, there's a lot on that plate right now. And maybe it's time that we looked at uh, taking some of the, uh, some of the um, academic administrative responsibilities away from the athletic director and, 
and, and seeing about um, creating a department head for physical education to do evaluation and things like that. Because I think it's time also that we get back to um, middle school athletics and middle school competitive athletics on the North Shore. And I, I'd love to see that as part of the role of the athletic director. And we need to be realistic. We need to understand that there's only 24 hours in the day and it's already uh, a uh, extremely demanding position. But perhaps if we could take away evaluations uh, and, and look at that job description and maybe carve out some other things. Because, you know, Dr. Vidala mentioned it a few weeks ago when we were talking about this subject, not directly, but indirectly. You know, it's AAU programs that are, you know, grabbing kids early on, you know, whether it be lacrosse or soccer or baseball or basketball, you know, they're grabbing kids that are 10 years old now, eight years old, and it's almost become the role of the AAU program to do this um, marketing, if you will, for, their, for the student athletes that go through their program to, with college coaches and things like that. And, and you know, not everybody that attends Peabody Public Schools or participates in our athletic programs um, is able to participate in AAU. They're, they're generally costly. And I'm, I'm certainly thankful that there are scholarships that are offered to so in some AAU programs, but I can't imagine it's, it's capturing everybody. So I agree, Mr. Norris. I would fully support um, you know, adding language in the role of the athletic director to, um, and, and I, to, to do some college, uh, make some connections with, with college coaches or college athletic directors and programs. Um, and I would e even say that I'd like to see, because of the flight that we have, we lose, Peabody loses a tremendous amount of student athletes to, to, to private programs partially because of this, partially because of facilities, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But, um, you know, I'd love to see an athletic director who's back down at the lacrosse fields and watch co Coach Vidala in, in action uh, or at the Little League, at the Little League parks, um, you know, or even in the summer league programs at Symphony Park for basketball and, you know, actively engaging with, you know, middle school kids, even elementary age kids and explaining to them what we have up at the high school, what, what programs we have, what history I mean, we, boy, talk about a story history, and Peabody has it. So in any event, I could talk on this for a long time, as I already have. So thank you for, again, your leadership and, and uh, bringing this forward. Well, thank you for your comments, and I, you know, I wholeheartedly support it. And it sounds like here we're on the same page. We want to make that step forward. And I think the biggest thing is we don't want to lose talent or waste talent that some of our students may have. And, you know, middle school and before, I think that's certainly something worth looking at. But it does sound like overall, the discussion of the role of the athletics director is definitely um, something we need to talk about going forward. Mr. Amico, did you have anything? Sure, I just wanted to add to that, and I totally agree with uh, um, Mr. Hawkman and through the chair. I, I just look at it as, um, again, the recruiting piece. You know, you look, you think of the the the, the girls. Like I'll, I'll, you know, look at the girls lacrosse team. They all started out playing youth sports together, and they sort of just came up at the same time. But that nice feeder system that we have. Um, came right into the high school and they did well. But, and with that said, maybe they were just one player away. You know, maybe that player was at, and, and, and I don't know, I'm just saying hypothetically, one pl could be, they could have been one player away from, from going to the next level, uh, you know, competing for the state championship. And, and that player could have been at a, at a private school nearby. And that's where that role of the athletic director or someone um, that maybe even in guidance that we, we have that can, just really help out that athletic de uh, department, and um, it, it's just big. It's 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 you know it, it's just it's just so important to us. I was a student athlete. I ended up going to Suffolk University. I, I met lifelong friends there. I wasn't you know I was a I was an average ball player, but you know I, I got to meet people from all over the New England area, and I still have friends because of that. So I just think it's just more than just winning and losing during your four years, it's, it's about building lifelong relationships as well. And I think that's, that's something that we can probably invest in here through the school committee. Thank you. Well, thank you both for those comments. Did you have something um, as well? Well, I'd, I'd like to make a motion. Oh, sure. Yeah, so I'd like to make a motion uh, a asking the, I don't know if it would be the superintendent or the, uh, or the um, human resource director to provide us with a uh, copy of the athletic director's job description 
um, and to propose some language that is consistent with um, the conversation we're having with regard to the role of the athletic director and uh, would it be recruitment or, or with I, I college readiness yeah or preparation skills so moved. Okay. Second. All right. We'll move that motion forward, and we can bring that up tonight. Uh, all in favor to vote. All in favor. Yeah, favor. And then uh, I think unless, uh, Dr. Ballard, did you have any quick comments on that, or we, I'd be happy to move forward as well if. Um, sure. Um, just quickly, I can send that to you right now. The job is posted. Uh, I will say one, one thing that may I may disagree with part of this is I do think that the athletic director overseeing the curriculum aspect of it and evaluating our teachers is also important. We are talking about student athletes. Uh, I, I wholeheartedly believe in, in our ath athletic programs uh, and it is something that helps kids get into schools, it helps kids stay in school and, and participate in, and it's a carrot to keep their grades up. Um, so I do think that they go hand in hand and I will say my favorite NCAA commercial is when it talks about the hundreds of thousands of NCAA athletes and how 95% of them are, are going pro in something other than athletics. Um, that's my favorite commercial of all time. 99% um, of them are, are going professional in something other than athletics. And so I think it's important for us to keep that in mind. Um, I think having the athletic director being part of our school and not being just an overseeing athletics I think is an integral part, um, but I'm happy to, to keep the conversation going. Uh, I think that we have the job is posted right now. We have some unbelievable candidates with some excellent experience. We have some internal candidates um, with some excellent credentials, and, and I'm very confident that we're going to get uh, an excellent athletic director to move forward who will be part of this conversation in the future and really look to grow all of our programs. So I'm really excited about this process. Thank you, Dr. Vidal. That's fantastic. And um, just on that note, that's another opportunity for us to really dig into this because we're having that change of the guard with the athletics director. So I think that's fantastic and we'll continue this conversation as we go forward. Um, very quickly before we get to facilities, I did just want to update folks on uniforms and if there are any other comments. Thank you, um, Mr. Scanlon, for giving us the update. Along with the 10,000, we moved to um, the arts curriculum, um, theater curriculum. We moved 22,306 to athletics, um, four uniforms, another. Um, equipment of that nature. So, Mr. Miko. And, and I want, through the chair, and I wanted to thank Dr. Vidala for that. We had a, we had a really nice discussion about that, and, and he really looked at it and he said, yeah, we, we need to do that. We need to do that for our student athletes. So I want to thank you for uh, making those uh, students and also uh, in our, was it drama? Performing arts. It's performing um, arts. Our really priority is. as well. Yep. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vidal. And it's, you know, it's important after the year we've been through, I think, you know, increasing those extracurriculars, allowing um, our young adults to, you know, maybe have some better tools when they're when they're doing those things would be a would be a kind gesture. So I'm I'm thrilled about that. And then uh, to wrap it up, our f facilities, Mr. Hoffman. Yeah, thank you. Um, I throw a notice. Uh, we we talked a few years ago about um, you know, for few, about six, seven, eight years ago already. Um, we've got a wonderful new football field, uh, and it's getting a tremendous amount of use. It's, uh, and thankful, thankful to uh, PMLP for being a big contributor to that, as long as, as well as some others. Um, and when that field was installed, it came with a 10-year life expectancy. That's what I think the warranty is on the field, and that's what the life expectancy is. So we're probably about 70% of the way towards the life expectancy of the field, and. Um, you know, I'm sitting here across the room from Ms. Dunn and reminded of comments that she's made through the course of my career here on the school committee about, you know, we don't, uh, and earlier today, we, we can't get nice things, right? We don't invest in maintenance um, of nice things, and when things go, they're gone, right? So when we go to graduation a few weeks ago, which was a beautiful ceremony on a gorgeous day, uh, celebrating the achievement of, of all of our students um, were reminded that there's no bleacher for the visiting section on the opposite side of the field. And, and if, I if I remember right, that bleacher went away. It was either my first year on the school committee 
or the year before I came on, so it's 12 or 13 years ago. Uh, and we were, we were, it was taken away because it was um, uh, structurally uh, compromised and uh, it wasn't safe for use for people. So, uh, but we were assured that it was gonna be replaced. And here we are, uh, a long, long time later, it's still not there. And I'm not here to talk about bleachers, but I'm here to talk about football fields. Because I think it's time that we put a plan together, uh, either for um, some sort of uh, refurbishment or, or replacement of a football field. And I don't think that's going to happen next year. I mean, I think we're, you know, three to five years away from um, really needing to do something. But I, I'd like to see a plan put together on, on what that looks like in terms of costs and what that looks like in terms of materials and things like that. Um, so that was initially, Mr. Onotis, why I... Uh, raise this issue with you. You know, in, in addition to that, um, I think the football field is getting a lot more use than was anticipated uh, due to the um, condition of some of the other fields. I mean, lacrosse is there as they should be, and soccer and field hockey and a lot of other sports uh, as they should be. We should get as much use out of this field as possible. And, and then, um, you know, I think Ms. Dunn and I sat on a um, it wasn't a football field committee. I forget what we called it, through with Parks and Rec and some other community members about putting together fee schedules and, and fee, yeah, field use and things like that. And that was, you know, at the inception of this field. And, um, and we're getting that use, right? I mean, we're raising some revenue from that use. And, and uh, I don't know that a fund was established to capture that revenue. Uh, a trust fund, if you will, or something, a maintenance fund or something along those lines. I don't know that it's not. I just don't know. But um, I, I can imagine that we're going to have a fairly significant expenditure in the near future um, for the football field. So with that, uh, I will also want to remind um, everyone out there listening to us uh, that, you know, we, we talked about a baseball field, a turf baseball field, you know, about three years ago. And, you know, that was really when the mayor, um, through his leadership, led, you know, led and continues to lead us on uh, a charge for a new high school. And, you know, I, we were all on board, I think we're all on board with that on the committee. We're unanimous in that support. Um, but, you know, then the talk of the baseball field, which is, um, you know, the, we do the best we can with it. And, and the infield was certainly upgraded this year. There was a lot of work put into it. Um, and... It was appreciated, but uh, there's really not much you can do with the outfield. There's not much you can do. The lighting, uh, we're, we're at a, a stage now where we can't, we cannot safely play a baseball game on the, uh, on the diamond of the high school at night under the lights. The lighting system is, um, boy, talk about life expectancy. It's archaic. It's probably as archaic as the univents at the Welch uh, for heat. Uh, we can't even, we're, we're told we can't even get light bulbs um, for the light standards at the high school and um, that's, that's sad. You know, that, that's, that's sad. So it, it's not just, um, you know, field conditions, it's lighting, it, it's, there's still no, there's really, you know, other than the Jeff Allison donation of a bleacher, there's really no place to sit on the baseball diamond for spectators. Um, you know, this is, this is long-term stuff. This isn't just falling on us. But I don't want to see that happen to the football field, which is, you know, certainly the premier field in the city. You know, so I, I'd like to look into what we need to do to keep the football field as glorious as it is and also advocate for some funds being spent for um, baseball. And even, you know, for that matter, the upper soccer and lacrosse field uh, is, you know, similarly in poor, poor condition. Um, so I don't know if, if you want me to make a motion or we want to talk about this a little further. Well, I think a motion might be appropriate, but I believe, Mr. Amico, you had some comments as well. Um, through the chair, Mr. Hockman, if you would make the motion, and then I'll, I'll on the motion. Okay. Yeah, so I think that this um, motion is, would be directed towards the business manager um, through the chair to generate some um, estimates for what it would cost for either refurbishment or replacement of the football field. I'll make a, a few different motions just to keep them germane, I guess. So, so moved. All right. Second. All right. All in favor, it's vote. Mr. Dunn, did you have a comment? I, I do. 
I do. I was trying not to comment, but would you consider, as you're making a list, the track um, is really in need of repair too. I went up and walked the track recently and was really very concerned when I saw how it's degrading in different areas, and I was surprised. And then I was doing the mental calculations of how long it's been since we redid it, and it does get a lot of heavy use, but if you could add that to the list. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Dunn, through the chair to you, I'm gonna, let's vote on this motion, and I'm gonna ask Chairman our notice to suspend rules so you can make the motion. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my list, I've got lists for other things, but if you can do it, it, it really, it really, it's all part and parcel, and I know a lot of people think when you're talking football field, they think of the whole complex of the stadium, but there are two different considerations. Yeah, thanks. Well, Mr. Hockman, I was actually going to ask, if you wanted to amend your motion, because you know we're talking about X number of locations, would it be better to ask the business manager to come up with estimates um, for the refurbishment and cost of each of our outdoor recreational facilities at the high school? Is that? Because it's the track we're looking at, we're talking about the football field and then the upper fields, right? I, I haven't been on the tennis courts in a while, but it was my understanding that they were recently. They were, uh, yeah. yeah. So I don't want, I don't think we need to look there. So we can uh, exclude those. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, if we want to take it as the uh, football field um, yeah. and refurbishment or replacement of the track, mm -hmm. and I would say upgrade to turf and upgrade lighting on the baseball field and the upper soccer, lacrosse, field hockey. I mean, it's a multi-use field. Mm -hmm. The one, you know, uh, closest to the yeah, skating rink parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I could, we could do that all. All right, that covers, I think, what we're Second. trying to get at here. All right, so all in favor, so we'll move that forward. Uh, Mr. Amico. Uh, through the chair, um, Ms. Dunn, thank you for saving my bacon here. Um, I also wanted to thank and congratulate the track team for an incredible year um, and also the, uh, the girls softball team. And I hope I didn't miss anyone else, but I think the, uh, the spring sports had just a great, um, great run. So just wanted to congratulate all those teams. I, I checked with the city clerk today. I didn't see Amico running for office anywhere. <laughs> but no, important stuff. We need to recognize our kids with achievement, regardless of whether it's athletics or academics or arts. So good work, Mr. Amico. Awesome. Well, if th there are no other comments, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn, and uh, we'll wrap up and look forward to our motion next Motion to adjourn. All right. All in favor. Thank you all for a great subcommittee meeting. Thank you.